Hi everyone, I'm excited to share that we've got Jesse Pugh from Sweetbriar College here with us today. And I just before I started recording, I said, oh, this is so pretty, this image is already, I already wanna go. So welcome, Jesse. thank you for joining us today. I'm excited to learn more about Sweetbriar and, and hear what's new and exciting and, and, and all, everything, all, all things Sweetbriar. So I'll let you take it from here. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to meet with you all. Um, so this is kind of just a great overview picture of Sweetbriar. We are an all women's college. We were founded in 1901 um, and then our first class graduated in 1906. Um, so we've been around since before women had the right to vote um, and are still going strong today. Um, we're a small school. We have about 400 students total and our average class size is about seven to eight students. Some are a little bit larger, um, especially our first year classes, um, but you know, Professors really get to know our students. They know how hard they're working. They know if they need extra help. They also know if they're not coming to class because it's really obvious who's missing in a class that small. Um, but they hold you accountable, which I think is a great thing about looking at a small school. 99% um, of our students live on campus and a large chunk of our faculty and staff live on campus as well. So students might have the opportunity to have dinner and lecture with their professor instead of having to be in the classroom the whole time um, in non-COVID times, I should say. Um, we are dedicated to preparing our students to go on after graduation and our students are very successful and I'll go into that a little bit more um, a little bit later on in this presentation. Um, we are in kind of in our own little bubble. We're on almost 3000 acres. Um, we've got 18 miles of trails um, for hiking. Um, riding for equestrian bike riding. Um, one of the local mountain biking clubs likes to use our campus um, as a place to hang out and go on trail rides. Um, and we also have a 130 acre equestrian center on our campus. So if students are interested in riding, you don't have to go half an hour down the road to get to the equestrian center. It's actually on our campus. It's walking distance. Um, we do have a shuttle. It is about a mile and a half walk. But if you know, you're up for it, you can always take a walk up to the riding center, pet the horse, even if you don't want to ride. And I have to say that the, the size of your campus is incredible <laughs> for, <laughs> for, you know, I, I, for those who are watching and maybe don't appreciate in terms of what a typical campus size is, especially for a small school, you have so much space. That's, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, I should also mention that we are located um, just outside Lynchburg, Virginia in Amherst County. Um, that's about 20 minutes from Lynchburg itself. Um, we're about two hours west of the capital in Virginia, Richmond, um, and about an hour south of Charlottesville. So we're in central Virginia um, at the foot of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So um, really pretty views all around campus, which is nice. Um, and our academics are very strong. We've got about 20 undergraduate programs. Uh, we also have a master's of arts in teaching program. And we are one of two women's colleges that are ABET accredited in engineering, um, which is really great because that means you don't have to go on and get your master's to actually start working in the engineering field. You graduate with an engineering degree from Sweetbriar. Um, and we've had students go on to work at NASA, NAVAIR, um, really anywhere you're interested in working, we can probably get you there. Uh, we have a unique calendar system. So at most colleges, you will see that they have a 15 or 16 week semester um, in the fall and then a second one in the spring. At Sweetbriar, we've broken up that 15 week semester into two portions. So you start the calendar year in the fall with a three week term. So you take one class every day for three weeks, um, which is great if you have a class that you might struggle with, particularly I'm not a math person. I would probably take my math class during that time because I can focus Same. on <laughs> one class. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then you go into your 12 week term um, where you take four or five classes like you would at any other institution. We have winter break. You come back in the spring semester for another 12 week term and then you finish up the spring semester with a three week. Um, during the three week terms, you can take travel courses when it's safe to do so. Um, you can do internships. You can start an internship early. So if you have a summer internship that wants you to start, you know, end of April, you could do that, still get class credit for it and then continue it through the summer. Or if you have a summer class internship that um, wants you to stay on a little bit longer, once the semester starts, you can also finish up an internship in the fall three week. Um, the only classes that are dictated what you have to take and when um, is your first year, your first three week, all of our first year students take 
what's called design thinking. That's the first core curriculum class. Um, instead of general studies requirements, we have a leadership core, which I'll explain in just a second. Um, but design thinking helps you unlearn learning to the test. At a lot of schools, you, you know, learn chapters one through 10, take a test on it, and then you forget it and can move on to the next chunk of chapters to learn. Here, you are challenged how to read textbooks, see if there's bias in them, what bias is there, why does the textbook say what it says, um, and kind of challenge just being told the information, mm -hmm. or challenge to learn and educate yourself on all sides of whatever argument the textbook is presenting. So it really helps you prepare to challenge information that just being given information um, as you go on throughout your life. Um, which is why we developed the leadership core. So all of our students take the same 10 classes throughout their four years at Sweetbriar. Um, they're all interdisciplinary, so design thinking gets you started. Um, there's one called Dollars and Cents, which is about personal finance and understanding economics, which I think is so important for people to understand, to be able to you know, do their taxes without having to pay somebody to do it. Um, not that tax accountants aren't important, but um, just being able to kind of be on your own um, there's another one called Women and Gender in the World, which is one that I really want to take. Um, they invite in different female leaders from around the area, the country, um, and they bring them to the class to talk with our students. And then our students write a debate response paper based on the expertise of the speaker for that week. And then in our library, which was built in 1929, um, they have debates. So we have debating balconies in our library. So we're one of the only schools where you can actually yell in the library. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> um, so it just gets, um, you know, you get to either pick the side that you might agree with or you might have to defend the side that you don't agree with. Um, but it really shows you how to um, understand the opposite side of what you know you might believe and kind of having some empathy for other people but it also brings in um, a lot of great leaders um, and it helps prepare our students to become leaders whether they want to be president of the united states or maybe they just want to be the leader of their friend group and help organize things so there are women leaders all over in many different levels uh, you don't necessarily have to become a ceo to be a leader um, but all of the leadership core classes um, are interdisciplinary and they really help you prepare for um, life after college. Um, and this replaced the general education requirements. So at a lot of other schools, you have to take, you know, two history, two math, two science. Um, this replaces that. And we found that it really helps us, or helps our students go on after graduation. Um, we also have an academic resource center for all of our students. So we offer free tutoring um, for all of our students for all of our classes. Um, we also have, this is where accessibility services is also located. So if you have any, um, you know, testing concerns, if you get test anxiety, you need to test by yourself. If you, um, you know, have any accommodations that you need help with, this is where you would go to get that all taken care of. We also offer $2,000 grants for all of our students to help with their um, learning, whether that is they're going to study abroad and need help to purchase their plane tickets. They can use the $2,000 for that. If they're doing a research project and need to buy a particular kind of microscope, you can use the money for that. So it's, you get to dictate what you'd like to use it for. Um, but one of the um, core classes is actually about grant writing. So you get to write your grant proposal to request the $2,000. You can use it all at once or you can break it up, you know, $500 here, $1,000 there. Um, and you request the money to use it and then they will. Um, but that gives you experience if you have to go on and do grant writing after graduation. Um, and a lot of our students do hands-on experiences with faculty. In fact, um, six out of 10 of our students work on original research projects with our faculty. Um, so lots of great hands-on experience, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and then this is a picture of one of our engineering professors um, and one of our engineering students working on a project hand in hand. Um, so just a great example of that. We had a student um, last summer who did, um, she found that there on a particular birch bark tr birch tree on campus, um, there were some antimicrobial properties. So she worked with our pre-med advisor to develop the antimicrobial properties of this particular birch bark tree over the summer during her summer research project. So just another example of um, how hands-on learning is here at Sweetbriar. Going back to the grants piece, Jesse, I think that 
that's something, you know, when you mentioned the grant writing skill, I agree. I, I wish that that was something that they had as, as a, a mini class for every college student, because I think in so many industries, grant, the grant writing is, is something that is really valuable. And I hope that students, if anyone watching this, if you ever get an opportunity to apply for a grant, like what's offered at Sweetbriar, take advantage of it. That's so cool that you guys offer that for, for students to do, to, to have that opportunity. I hope that it doesn't get wasted. I hope people are actually doing it. Oh yeah, we have had to do that. So the student who did the Burke Birch um, research used her gel grant for that. Um, we've had students, you know, going abroad who want to, you know, they need, you know, a little extra money for maybe um, housing or for their plane ticket. So, it, and I, the thing I like most is that the students get to say, this is what I want to use it for, and this is how it will benefit my education. Um, so I just think it's a great experience. And again, grant writing is such a great skill to have, yep. um, regardless of what field you go into. Right. Um, and then on to career services. Um, our career services office starts working with students their first year here at Sweetbriar. They start with programming the first year. Um, so it's not just, okay, we're gonna focus on the juniors and seniors who are getting ready to go to graduate and go out into the workforce. Our uh, career services office is fantastic. Um, they help our students find internships, but our alumni also help us find internships. Um, our alumni love our students, um, love supporting them. Um, so a lot of our students, uh, our alumni will tell students or tell career services, hey, my job has an internship opening or I have a job opening at my place of work. Um, I want to have the Sweetbriar students kind of get first dibs on it. So um, we have students or alumni that work on the Hill, at NASA, um, really all over. If there's a field you can think of, we probably have an alumna there. So um, eight out of 10 of our students have at least one internship experience. A lot of them have several internship experiences while they're here at Sweetbriar. And then within six months of graduation, 90% of our alumni are in either in grad school or have gone on into the workforce and are employed after graduation. So that six month window is pretty immediate. Most of our students either have a grad school placement or um, have an employee, employer lined up before graduation even hits. So we have a really high success rate um, in getting students where they wanna be in the field that they have majored in. Well, and I said to Jesse before we started uh, recording that I have a, a former colleague, hi Sarah, um, who is a Sweetbriar alum. And I will say that the, the alumni connection piece was I know, I know for her is one of the things that has last, I, and I won't reveal her age, but I know it's, you know, it's been something that's been so important for her. And one of the most interesting things is that it's not just alumni connecting with you know alumni that graduated near their class year i mean it's like alumni from 30 years ago are connecting with current you know recent graduates and i think i really do think that that's something special about all women's colleges also i think there's just a different kind of bond there as well and a dedication to helping one another so i i love that about sweetbriar so thank you for sharing Oh, no problem. Another great example is that each summer before students move back onto campus in August, um, we do what's called sweet work weeks. So our alumni come back to campus, they help garden, they help paint, um, just to give back to the students and help kind of beautify the campus and freshen up the campus before everybody moves back on at the end of August. So they still were able to do that this year through COVID. Um, but it's just been great. I love interacting with the alumni here. They're so uh, excited for what we're, we've been doing and want to support Sweetbriar in every way that they can, which really feeds into the student population as well. Um, so this is a glimpse of student life. Um, we guarantee housing all four years here at Sweetbriar, and this is a panoramic shot of one of our double rooms. Um, so each room comes with two beds, two dressers, two desks, um, to closets or built-in wardrobes. And the closets are actually pretty big. You can almost have a dance party in them. Um, they're, they're really great size, lots of great storage. Um, and the cool thing about our dorms is that um, each room has its own AC control, which you might not think is a big deal, but you only have to argue with your roommate on what temperature you want the room, not the whole hall at Sweetbriar, which I think is an excellent selling point for us. Um, we also offer on-campus counseling and health services, which are free for all of our students, um, which is very important. So if you're feeling a little homesick, you need somebody to talk to, um, we have counseling services available. 
we don't have a freshman or a first year specific dorm. Um, all of our class years are intermixed um, throughout the dorms. So if as a first year student, you might have or will probably have a first year roommate, but next door you might have a junior or senior, which is great because you don't have to just go to your resident assistant or your RA um, with questions. You can go next door and say, hey, where's this classroom? I don't know where it is. Um, and it kind of just helps build our um, campus community at Sweetbriar. We also have excellent campus dining. We have three dining options and they're all provided by Meriwether Godsey, which is a local to Lynchburg company. Um, they are woman owned and employee, or sorry, employee owned and women run um, business. Um, they do very much, very fresh farm to table food. There's always vegan and vegetarian options available, always gluten free options. Um, so if you have any dietary concerns, they're great about working with you. We also just added a 27,000 square foot greenhouse to campus and are using the vegetables that have been grown in the greenhouse in our dining hall. So an immediate um, farm to table experience. Students also get a chance to work in the greenhouse if they'd like to for one of the work study positions or if they're interested in agriculture science or environmental science, they can work in the greenhouse as well. And then we have lots of student leadership opportunities and clubs for students to join. And if there's not a club that we have currently on campus that you have at your high school that you'd like to have in college, it's very easy to get a new club started. All you need are four friends and a faculty advisor. Um, and then something that's also unique about Sweetbriar is that every student is part of the Student Government Association. A lot of other schools, you kind of have to opt into it. Um, here, everybody gets the emails, everybody gets the minutes about what happened at the student government. Anybody can go to the meetings. Um, the executive board members are still elected, but everybody, including faculty and staff, are part of the Student Government Association. So everybody knows what's going on and everybody has a say in student life on campus, which I think is awesome. So um, we do have athletics. We are Division Three school. We're part of the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. And we're the Vixens. We just redid our logo last year, so I love this, the new Vixen that we have. Um, so we have seven sports that compete in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference, and then we also have two equestrian teams. Um, and all of our teams are open tryouts since we're a Division Three school, so you don't have to worry about specifically being recruited to come play for us. If you know you played soccer in middle school and you're like, you know, I want to try and pick that back up, you can still go out for the team um, your first year here at Sweetbriar. So no pressure. Um, you're always a student first and then an athlete here at Sweetbriar. And then our writing. So we have um, two competitive equestrian teams, as I mentioned, but we also have writing classes. So if you're interested in learning how to ride a horse um, or you maybe want to um, own a barn or, you know, help with coaching, that sort of thing, we have um, an equine study certificate, which is kind of like a minor here at Sweetbriar. Um, we have a large indoor arena. Um, we're actually renovating um, the barn portion of the arena now. Um, so we had an alumna who um, wanted to help us kind of revive it a little bit. Um, it was built in the 70s, so it was due for a little bit of a refresh. Um, and it looks so beautiful. I'll be, I'm really excited for when they release the photos. Um, we got to see some sneak peeks, but um, photos are fantastic. Um, and then Michaela Benjamin, who is in the picture, um, kind of faded in the back, um, won the um, Kishan Cup in 2018 or sorry, yeah, 2018. Um, and then we also have several alumna that are Olympians that have competed in equestrian. So we have a very strong team, um, but if you've never touched a horse and you wanna learn how to ride, we can still teach you. We've had students who have come to Sweetbriar having never seen a horse in person and we're not only riding, but competing by the time the junior year and senior year rolled around. So definitely have fantastic coaches and everybody on campus is really here to help and support our students. Do you have an approximate number of students who are riding as part of the competitive program? Um, there are, there were 30 members of the IHSA team and I want to say about 15 on the NCEA team. So about 45 students um, that are riding competitively. Um, and then we have, I want to say about a third of our students total do some sort of equestrian um, participation, whether that's just taking some classes. Um, we have 50 school owned horses, so students don't have to worry about bringing their own horse or having their own horse, but um, students are allowed to bring their own horses to campus if they have one. Thank you. 
Uh, we're also affordable. We are a private school, so there's no in-state versus out-of-state tuition. Everybody pays the same. Um, tuition right now is $21,000 or almost 22, um, and then room and board is $13,500. Um, and including all of the fees, it's about $36,000 a year. Um, room and board includes um, your dorm room as well as your meal plan, so you don't have to worry about paying extra for your meal plan. Um, and we actually did a tuition reset a few years ago because at a lot of private schools, you see that they've got a $50,000, $60,000 price tag and then give you a deep discount um, with scholarships. We've taken the discount ahead of time. We still have merit scholarships available for students um, based off of your high school transcript and or your SAT or ACT scores. Um, but we've, it's, we, we're trying to make it easier so you don't have to do a lot of mental math to figure out how much it's actually gonna cost you out of pocket. So that's why we did the um, tuition reset and did those discounts ahead of time. Um, of course, submit your FAFSA. It's very important regardless of what school you're gonna be attending. Um, you know, just want to figure out exactly how much aid and support that we can provide for you. Um, and then our application process. Um, there's no fee to apply to Sweetbriar. You can apply on our website or through Common App, whichever is easiest for you. We don't have a preference. Um, we have early decision and early action applications that are open now. And then after December 1st, which is the early action deadline, um, we'll go over to rolling admissions for regular decision. So we don't leave you hanging for too long. We try to get you a decision as soon as we can. So you don't have to sit and you know, bite your nails and be worried about, oh, did I get in? Um, and then the required pieces for your application are definitely your high school transcript for the end of your junior year um, and possibly test scores. We are test optional if you have above a 3.0 GPA. Um, and then we don't require letters of recommendation or personal essays. We'd love to read them, but if it's stressing you out, don't worry about it. Um, we'd rather just be able to get you a decision. And then if you're interested in transferring to us, we do offer free transfer credit evaluations. Um, and if you're transferring, you just need your transcript from the, all the previous colleges that you've attended to get you a decision. And then if you're interested in coming on a tour with us, we are offering virtual tours um, Tuesdays at nine in the morning, Wednesday evenings at seven o'clock, and Thursday afternoons at 4 p.m. You can register for those on our website. Um, and then if you're interested in coming for an in-person tour, maybe you've done the virtual tour already um, and want to see us in person, we do tours um, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. and on select Saturdays. And of course, we'll have some open houses throughout the year. Um, so I hope to see you on campus. Um, I think it's a great opportunity for students. So thanks. Can students schedule um, any type of individual conversations with admission counselors if they're interested? We can certainly do that. Um, I'm actually the counselor for Ohio. Um, so if a student were to apply, um, I can um, send you my phone, my um, office number in the chat in just a second. Um, but um, I'm happy to help you out. Um, if you want to set up a one on one interview, we can do that. Um, but because we are such a small school, um, we actually call all of our applicants. So we'll talk with you one on one. We check in with you about once a month through um, calls, text and email just to see how your college search is going. Um, we know that you're more than a piece of paper and want to treat you as such. So we like to talk with our students and get to know them. You know, I want to know how was prom and how was that big game that you had. You know, I want to know you as a person. So that's one thing I like about my job. Can you talk a little bit about um, scholarships? Do you guys offer merit awards? Yes, so we offer merit scholarships based off of high school GPA and or SAT or ACT scores. Um, at this time, we're still finalizing our scholarships for this year. Um, last year, the highest scholarship um, just based off merit aid was um, about $8,000. We're hoping to increase that this year. Um, so we're, um, but probably wouldn't be much lower on the, on the lowest end of the 8,000, so. And I would say going back to the year of pricing, I, I actually, I, the schools that have done something similar where you've had kind of a tuition reset, it is actually helpful because it was also less, less daunting for families to see that sticker price, uh, you know, then because a lot of families wouldn't understand in terms of the deep discounting that happens from that 50 or 60,000. So um, you are, you know, you're, you're affordable on the sticker price and then it's nice mm -hmm. to know that there's some additional merit awards available. Um, one last question I have is about outcomes. What are yes. some Sweetbriar outcomes? What are some uh, what are some things that graduates have done with their degree from Sweetbriar? Do you have any notable oh. alumni? Um, 
Well, we have so many. We have so many that are um, on the Hill in Washington. They are representatives. They are lawmakers. Um, we also have a student who just graduated in 2020 um, who is going to work for NASA. Um, she was one of our engineering majors. So um, getting more women into the STEM field is something we're really um, excited about. Oh, there's so many to pick from. <laughs> um, That's a good problem to have. When yeah. You, you know, you not being able to I just identify a couple that's great to say that because I know you know just in general I think one of the one of the things that we often um, have conversations with female student you know students about the benefits of attending an all women's institution and I think the outcomes if you look at women's colleges in general the outcomes are really exceptional and I think uh, you know looking at where a lot of a lot of people have have done their work it's the people are surprised to find out that it's been an all women's college. So um, yeah. I think there's a, you know, a lot of benefit and the, it's good that you've got too many. To, to yeah. I think the one that surprised me the most, um, cause I've only been with Sweet Bear for about a year and a half now. Um, but the, um, founder of TaskRabbit who Ikea works with, yeah. um, is a Sweet Briar alumna. Oh, cool. So, um, she sold it to Ikea. Um, but she founded TaskRabbit to help, you know, people, who you know, either don't have the time or don't have the ability to you know, build their Ikea furniture or yes. <laughs> stuff around the house. Um, she, a Sweet Briar alum founded that, which I think is awesome. That is awesome. Well, Jesse, thank you for taking the time to chat with us today and to share more about Sweet Briar. And uh, for anyone watching, please take advantage of some of these virtual tour opportunities and reach out to the office to arrange you know, some individual conversations if you're curious and about learning more. I do like that you're offering virtual tours at various times during the day because of we've, we have a lot of students who are in various time zones and um, or whose parents are working or students who are working. And so it's nice that you offer them throughout the day. So thank you for doing this and, and thanks for, for visiting with us. It was great to hear more. Thanks so much for having me. It was a pleasure.